Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be back and it's a pleasure to be having this conversation with you. I'm glad to talk about a concept that I've actually acknowledged in the recent past that is a problem for most enterprises and most organizations in our country, especially the SMEs, that is small medium enterprises that are in the country. And this ultimately then makes, makes it challenging for these organizations, one, to thrive, to operate at their optimum and also to drive efficiencies in their ways of working. What does that mean for us? It either costs you your employees who are not able to deal with the complexities of actually trying to find out the best way to do everything every single day because there are no structures in place. That becomes a problem. On the other end, it also costs the business its own muscles to be able to deliver impact and also to scale up and grow to its best level that it could achieve, achieve especially for institutions where you see there is potential for them to be substantially big organization and big companies so then how do we ensure that we do we solve for these problems it's about institutionalization and putting up structures for the organization that we work for institutionalization in some concept would look like having the, the right paperwork and the right guidance documents whatever is needed from a legal perspective to meet government requirements, statutory obligations. And most of organizations and most of the companies that I've gotten to engage with or even hear about have put up those aspects. Why? Because it is a government requirement, therefore then there is a cost to not doing that particular aspect of what the government needs. You need your tax obligations, right? You need to have paid your taxes. You need to have the social security fund and registration for your members, NITA payments, whatever all that looks like, including the occupational safety and health related requirements. Perfect enough, those are there. But how do your day-to-day -day operations and activities in the organization work? Because that is a challenge. And the reason as to why this is an interesting topic for me as well is that we are working in, a, in an environment where Unemployment is at an all-time high and with an unemployment high, everybody is looking at options on how to make ends meet, how to make a living and in making a living then we are going into enterprising, setting up organizations, starting companies, starting businesses, which is good enough. But also at the same time, some of us are getting jobs with SMEs and these SMEs do not have the structures. And linking to my previous video, one of them that I did around young professionals and the complexities when you are accorded a senior leadership role, is that you find yourself, you are in an organization where structures and institutional frameworks are not there. But then the organization expects you to be able to deliver on these, partly because some of them might be coming with new regulatory requirements. But in some other cases, these are the key aspects that would make your work easier. Alternatively, then you might not be able to function at your optimum. This is a risk. And when I'm talking about this, I had a recent case where this is one of the healthcare facilities in the country and in that facility then there's always the process of mainly within the pharmacy department in this context there's always the requirement that you might have the payment mechanisms when you look at the healthcare sector there are three p's that are critical one the patient who is the consumer of the healthcare service that we are offering there is the payer who is actually paying for the service could be the individual paying for their own service which would be the patient it should be their guardians or the caregivers the family whatever it is or it could be an insurance company that is paying for the care whether it's government social security insurance or it is the private insurance companies then the third p is the provider and the person providing the healthcare services if the three do not inter interlink in our inefficient way then there will be a risk and in this case then the risk that was presented in this kind of a conversation is that I'm employed as a healthcare service provider within the pharmacy and I'm supposed to be able to cost for the medicines and ensure that whoever is has a prescription we're able to process their prescription and get them the medication but there is a pre-authorization that needs to be granted by the insurer in this case before I dispense the medicines the process is not structured because it is not documented if it is not documented there's a chance that sometimes I've already dispensed the medicine, the patients have already taken the medicine home or it has been delivered because we're now looking at it in terms of supporting patients in their care journey from their remote locations. In processing that order, I've already dispensed the medication, it's already been charged and there's a cost to it. If by bad luck the insurance does not approve of this payment, that payment will not go through. What does that mean? Some of the times it's a close to the company, but oftentimes because companies do not carry the burden of such kind of nuances, then that cost will be charged on the salary of the person who actually was offering the service. 
I was looking out for the patient's well-being. I processed a prescription, but I did not factor the administrative bit. So the question is, how do we put structures that as a healthcare provider, we understand we are working in context where the healthcare provider also has an obligation to do the administrative and accounting work in the sense that processing the preauthorization, doing the accounting and actually ensuring the payments are approved before the dispensing happens. All those nuances have to be catered for. But oftentimes I get into a facility and I know that my main focus is ensuring that we're able to serve patients and deliver on the care that they need and we believe that somebody already on the back end is processing these preauthorizations, getting the medicine payment plans in place, whatever needs to be done. Imagine you're working in a facility and on, in a month, half of your salary has been deducted by the virtue that you looked out for the needs of the patient, processed a prescription that was available and you fulfilled it right as it should have been. But then there was that lapse in the sense that the pre-authorization was not requested from the insurer. And on that account, you are bearing the burden of an insured patient whose care should be catered for by the insurance company. These are risks and these are complexities that we are dealing with. How do we close on these? So that it doesn't impact the company, but it also doesn't impact the employees we are working with. It doesn't impact our own efficiencies and operations to ensure that we're able to thrive and deliver value at an impactful level. The starting point is for us to acknowledge that there are key statutory requirements and those basically it's about looking at what are the regulatory requirements, developing guidances that would help us to ensure that on an annual basis or on a quarterly basis we're able to track and see whether we are meeting our statutory obligations as per the government regulations. That is number one. But for a business to work, there are key bits that are important. Then there's the government bit of it, which is okay, but there are also the operational aspect, the key activities that we do on a day-to-day -day basis that makes us be able to offer the services or supply or provide the goods that we're offering to our clients or our customers in whatever setting that we are. Those are the core wheels that actually drive the cog of the organization to be able to be sustainable, that make us money as a company. What are these activities? What are the key steps and the key, actually I would say this, the level of layers of steps that we need to execute on before we conclude the sale because a sale is only complete when I have a service, I've rendered the service to somebody, the person has paid for it and therefore we can consider that a complete transaction. What does that look like? It looks like a patient has a prescription, probably I'm dealing with a telemedicine company, the prescription has been processed by the doctor who actually on their case, the consultation fee was charged in a different level. Then the prescription comes to me at the pharmacy level and I need to establish, first of all, do we have the medicine that are in that prescription? Good enough. Once we've established that the medicines on the prescription are available within the pharmacy and in our stock or alternatively where we are switching or changing for some of the medicines, we need to consult with the doctor to establish the right course of care, whatever medication we will be processing or maybe even source it from another pharmacy to ensure that we are consolidating them to ease the journey for the patient. That is the first phase. But after that has been done, we need to evaluate and see who is paying for this service. If it is the patient, do they have the money in cash? Do, are we going to use the credit card or debit card, whatever it is? How is that payment being processed? If it is an insurance company, do we have pre-authorization for all our care provided a patient in the hospital? Or do we need to get pre-authorization before we dispense the medicines? that becomes a layer and that needs to be documented. Then after the documentation of that step, if a pre-authorization has been received, how do we process the prescription? We need to invoice. The invoice has to be attached to the pre-authorization sent to the insurer so that the claim can be processed because after that is when the claim can be processed. So that is structured in a documented way that there's a process flow and that process flow makes it easier for people not to forget and not to miss specific critical pieces of that work that might impact our abilities as organization to be sustainable but it's also important because when you have such kind of processes in place it leaves your employees and your colleagues with the mental space and the head space to be able to innovate to be able to think through how to get things better how to focus on key essentials where they actually need to focus on the care for the patient the care to the clients or actually the engagement with the patient so that they're able to understand their needs rather than instead of thinking of what medicines the patient need I'm thinking of I need to meet these administrative administrative requirement, this financial requirement, accounting bids and all that because at the end of the day it puts a strain on your employees and the risk is you either have high, high 
high turnover of staff which is a risk for the business because there's never continuity and without continuity you are risking your operations but also when risking your operations most of the times when such kind of things happen you'll find that your employees now get averse to processing let's say for example orders that are coming from such kind of complexities maybe they run away from processing orders for insurance patients what does that mean you are losing the patients or the clients and people that you are providing services to when you lose them you have no business to run that is a risk for you as an organization so we need to put up structures and i feel as a country we've been focusing on doing the doing doing the work and smes most of the times we do the work just because it is what works but the question is how can it be sustainable in the long term if david knew how things were working but david is not there anymore how will i ensure that my colleagues would be able to sustain the operations of what we're doing by putting structures and documenting the key process flows and those process flows will help the people who are coming in do better for young professionals who are venturing into entrepreneurship and looking at opening their pharmacies hospitals different practices whatever the business that you are in ask yourself at an organizational level what are the decision making layers what decisions do people really need to make a decision to seek pre-authorization or so, I don't think that is a decision to be made. That is clear depending on the kind of client that you're dealing with. So those are things that do not need decision making and therefore they can be automated in terms of setting up processes that somebody just follows as a, tech, as a checkbox. That case then you are leaving them to be able to make decisions. What decision do they need to make? How am I looking out for the well-being of this patient? Am I sourcing for medicines from one of our suppliers to ensure the prescription is processed or not processed? Am I consulting with the doctor to see whether we can switch from product A or to product B? Am I going to call the management to be able to decide whether we need to have this patient hospitalized in patient care for a period of time before they move or not? Or which decisions do I need to make? But if I have to move from doing the technical decision making from a technical expertise perspective to focus on doing the administrative and the accounting work, the risk is the quality of care to the patient, the quality of care to the clients, and that puts a risk and a strain on our businesses. And that is one of the key things that I'm passionate about. We need to find a way to document, develop process streams, workflows to ensure that our organizations can thrive. We need to move away from the experience of doing what gets us money today because if we go for what gives us the money today it is good to do that but we need to put structures such that we can secure our ways of making money from a business perspective today and through this year but also set up system that will sustain it in the next year and the year after that becomes a process stream that is there then now in the subsequent years it's about us asking ourselves what additional business models what additional revenue streams that can we develop that will be anchored on already existing systems because if we do not put them we will have year one still doing the same thing year two we are still having the complexity losing our revenues losing clients because of not standardizing our processes so my call is for companies and organizations sme specifically in the african context and kenyan perspective specifically we need to put up structures we need to document our process flows to ensure that we're able to work in a structured systematic way for young colleagues when you get employed when whether you're starting your own business if you get employed and these things do not exist it is an opportunity for you to start having the conversation with the owner of the company or the person who is managing the enterprise wherever you're working so that you document them that is where you now bring your technical leadership capabilities into the organization to ensure that it can work beyond where you started off on then if it works better it works for the organization it works for you and it gives you the room to think extra to go beyond the doing the nuances of every single day you are just doing the basic work that you need to be doing every other time in that way we will have organizations that are sustainable organizations that can thrive in the face of dynamics of changes and everything and therefore then we can build an enterprising ecosystem that is sustainable that is robust enough that can ensure that we have all these challenges we are having around unemployment and all that being addressed because we have systems that are thinking beyond the immediate needs of our society if you enjoy the conversation and you find this valuable i'd urge you to subscribe to the channel share it with your colleagues let's build a movement that makes a difference in the society as we work together thank you and have a good one